I was cruising around on the Tindy uh, website and I found a little kit that I thought might be kind of cool to build. So I sent off my money, waited a while, and it arrived. Let's put this one together. I've received a package from Switzerland. I've been waiting for this. This is a kit that I ordered. Uh, it's not a it's not an inexpensive kit, but I was I was cruising around on the Tindy website, which is where you can buy kits and stuff right from the designers and builders. And I found this little kit. And I thought this is kind of cool. It's a clock. I'll tell you that much. But it's well, it's it's quite unique. And I thought we'd build it together. This is some of the stuff that I do with uh, when I get uh, donations from viewers through either PayPal or through Patreon. And uh, I take the money and I use it to buy things so that I can build them or demo them. A lot of times when you see me demoing a product, people are quick to jump to the conclusion that I received the product for free and that I'm just, you know, quote, shilling something for Banggood, which is not the case. Uh, I, I do buy stuff from them and I show it off. Um, in fact, one of the few companies that does send me product that I don't pay for is IC Station. But the majority of the stuff, when I buy something off Amazon, for example, and I show it off, that's actually something that I've purchased. Anyway, this is another one that I purchased and uh, I got a couple cats in here that I'm going to kick out because they're going to start getting into things here. The last thing I need is cats jumping up on the bench and knocking a bunch of small parts away as I construct this. But anyway, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to build this. Uh, this is a dot matrix saw. So it's got multifunction LEDs and stuff. It's got a nice little case. It's got multicolor LEDs. And it looked kind of cool when I saw the thing demoed. So here it is. All the pieces are are cut, it's got a plexiglass, here's the circuit board, so it's all, looks like it's, it's all, looks like all through hole, which is going to make it pretty easy, and you see I got a cat that's now sitting by the door. Anyway, let me go remove the cats, get the soldering iron warmed up, we're going to put this together, and I'll put a link in on the description or on the video itself, probably in the description, as to where I got this from, so that any of you guys that might like to build one of these, you'll be able to get one and build your very own and see how it's done. So I open these up, I've got a bag of parts, no instructions, so I'm gonna have to see the photo of the website, I guess, and see if there's a manual for that to tell you which parts go where, because of course the board is all fully silk screened, but I have no uh, instruction manual, there's no construction plans to tell me which parts go where, a bag of components here. It does have some uh, SMD resistors I saw here somewhere. And uh, where did I see them? In one of these bags there was some SMD. Oh, there they are. They're in here. So I got some SMD resistors to go in. Uh, two different ones it looks like. Three different values. Here's the circuit board. And I say it comes with a it comes with a, a case and a stand, which is going to be kind of nice because it'll it can stand up. When it's all done, I'll have to put that together once I'm once I'm complete construction. Also comes with a nine volt adapter, and he sent me one with a European plug. But at least he sent me an adapter that I can plug this into to make it into a North American plug. That way I don't have to change adapters. But there's the adapter plug there. Oh, this is kind of nice. Actually, it's one that completely encloses the plug, unlike some of these cheap adapters that you find, which the the, the uh, pins happen to fall out quite easy. This one here looks like this will snap in there nicely and it's not going to come apart. That's great. That's great because a lot of these a lot of these adapters that I've received with other devices that which were set up for 240. This is a universal adapter obviously. It says a 100 to 240 volts. So this is the universal adapter. So this is just your, your standard plug adapter. But as I say a lot of these ones here they're so loose that you know the, the, the the unit will fall apart or fall out quite easily. So this one here, that'll snap in there, convert that over to North American plug. Now I've got a North American adapter. Nine volts, 
which is a little different because most of these uh, wall warts are either 5 or 12 volts. If it was a standard 5 or 12, I could just use another adapter that I've got. This is 9 volts. I don't have a 9 volt one, so I'm going to have to use the one that was supplied with it. I'm going to uh, go and uh, find some instructions to assemble this unit, and uh, then we'll get uh, mounting parts. So this is what it's going to look like when it's done. Uses dot matrix displays. And this is the uh, this is the the kit here, the guy that designed this one. So of course they go through the normal preamble, and they list out all the parts that it has. And then it'll give me a step-by-step -step instruction assembly. I'm going to start assembling components. Oh, well, according to the instruction manual, we should start by putting all the SMD resistors on. I agree, because uh, it's easier to put those on before you start to populate any of the through-hole components. So I'm just going to open up the parts bag here. Get our ICs and sockets out of the way. I'm going to get the SMD resistor packs out. And we'll go out and install them first. Unfortunately, I know I'm going to have trouble with the lights on here on the reflecting on my on my tablet. I might get my little stand and stand this up to make it a little bit easier to see. But there are th there are uh, three 430 ohm resistors, which are these ones here, and they have the number on them 431, and they are going to go on the board as shown R1, R2, and R3. So let's find. R1, R2, and R3. So R1 is down here, R2 is over here, and R3 is on the other side of the board, and it is over here. So let's mount those three resistors first. Now I noticed that they didn't give me any extra parts on this one, so I'm going to be extra careful as to not lose any of these little SMD parts because these things are very small, very easy to lose. But we'll put them on one at a time. Next, I'm going to do the 1K resistors. These will have a number of 1001, although they could have 102 on them as well, depending on the numbering system. These are the ones that are all outlined here in red. So we're going to have, oh, what's it? We're going to have all these ones here in red. So down here, 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 and these ones over here. These are all the these are all the one K ohm resistors. So let's get mounting those. And I'm not going to talk through this whole video, so there'll be portions where I'm just going to time lapse. And this will be one of those. So let's mount the 1,000 ohm resistors.
Okay, there's one uh, 1K resistor that's left over because there's 16 that were supplied and there's only 15 that go into the unit. So in this case, they did give me an extra. We'll now move on to do the rest of them, which are the, uh, what are these ones here, these ones are 10K, I believe. Yeah, 10K. Okay, if we look on the other side of the board, this is where the remainder of those uh, 1K uh, chip resistors go. They go on this side of the board, all of them. So if we set the board up like this, with this side facing down, we'll see that they all go through here, 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 and some more of them over here. So let's uh, put the rest of these 10K chip resistors down and that will get rid of all of the 10K resistors and then it's time to mount the uh, through hole parts. Now, as I mentioned before, this was an expensive kit. This is one of the more expensive kits, especially as far as clocks go. I think the only kit that was more expensive than this was uh, one of my Nixie tube, the six digit uh, Nixie tube kits. I say this was, this was one of the more uh, one of the more pricey of the more modern kits that I'm building, but I like to have something unique and having this when it's all done will be a unique conversation piece that will sit on a, on a table. Okay, all the SMD uh, resistors have been installed. Now it's time to mount the IC sockets. So we'll do all those next. So of course they're, they're all going only one direction. We'll start out with U4, which is a four pin, or I mean, sorry, an eight pin, four pin each side. We'll put the little notch here and these all go in from the top side of the board. So there's the first one. And I'm just gonna bend over a couple pins on here just to hold it in place. And then go and solder the eight pins in and we'll just work our way around the board and mount all of the IC sockets. It's nice that this kit, everything's socketed because it, it certainly makes things easier to work on, especially if you have a bad chip. It would be really nice if uh, consumer electronics used sockets for all the ICs, but uh, of course that adds to the cost. That used to happen at one time. We used to have uh, everything had ICs, every everything that used an IC socket. So, but uh, not not anymore. The last three sets of sockets 
U7, uh, U8, and U1. U7 and U8 are here. Next we'll mount D1 and D2, the two diodes. Be sure to pay attention to the polarity. Next we'll mount the regulator U2. It's going to go on the back side of the board and it is a surface mounted part, so it's just going to lay flush on the board and be soldered down to the board. This is so that the tab is soldered down as part of the, the heat sink. So we'll put the, we'll put the component on there, heat the tab first, let it flow, and then do the other two pins on the front. Next I'll mount the crystal X1, it's going to mount right next to the Atmel Atmega chip, we'll just mount it down onto the board, turn it over and tack it down and solder it. Now normally when I'm mounting a crystal I'll tack down one leg, then I can go through and press it through from the other side just to make sure it's flush, heat it up again, make sure it's flush with the board and then solder down the second lead. The crystals themselves are generally fairly sensitive. When you cut the leads, you wanna make sure that you're going to hang on to the lead itself to prevent any shock. So I'm gonna grab the lead, hold it, and then cut. That will prevent shock from traveling down and possibly damaging the crystal. Okay, the 16 megahertz crystal is installed. Let's check and see what's next on the list here. And they're going to have me put in capacitors. 1000 picofarad, 22 picofarad, and 100 nanofarad. Let's uh, get mounting the caps. We've even got them all color coded here, which is nice. So we have um, the green ones are 1000 picofarad. They all have a number of 102 on them. Let's just sort through those and Get our caps in order. It's a 104. We're going to sort them all out here into the different uh, the different sizes.
Oh, the warden is home. Next is the tantalum caps. There's uh, two 10 microfarad tantalum caps. These ones are polarized. One lead is longer than the other. And they're gonna go into C8 and C10. And they are marked positive for the longer lead. So there's C10 and C8. And there's also an electrolytic cap that goes down here, which is C2. And again, it is also um, polarity sensitive. So the longer lead goes into the positive hole. As you can hear, that bird is still screeching away. That bird screeches away all day long, every day. When you have to listen to it screeching all day long, it, it gets annoying. Next, I'll mount the fuse, F1. This does look like a capacitor, but it is in fact a fuse. You can always tell these ones because they got the kinked leads here on the on the leads. It looks like a ceramic cap, but again, if I if I put my meter in diode test mode, you'll hear that it's it's actually got a short because it's a fuse. So we'll hear a, a solid buzz here when I connect the leads up. That's a fuse, and that goes into F1 is the location, and that'll be down by where the power connects right here F1 take that down tight to the board leads a bit. So I take this down a little closer to the board then, uh, then it's going to go. So I'm just going to straighten these leads just a bit. We'll install the buzzer. It does have a positive side to it, and here it is. The positive is marked on this side here. It's got a plus, so that goes down to the plus on the board. It mounts on the back side of the board, and we'll just solder that in place. Now it says to remove this after washing. I'm not going to be washing this so I can remove the cover now. And we'll put the power jack on as well. Now 
Next will be the five pin programming header. That'll also go to the back side of the board. That's just in case you want to change the firmware on here at some future date. I don't think I'll be doing that, but I'll connect it anyway, just the heck for the heck of it. It's also a little light dependent resistor that is in here somewhere that's used to dim the display. It's in the package with the LEDs. So we'll remove the dot matrix LED packs and the multicolor LEDs to get to the light dependent resistor, which is this device right here. Leave myself a little bit of leads there just in case I change my mind. Next we'll mount the switches for setting the time and date and so forth. So the switches go on the front side of the board and just face off the board to the side. There's three of them. I got some MOSFETs to put on now. There's three. So Q1, Q2, and Q3. Go on the board here. Q1 or Q3, Q2, and Q1. Here are the three MOSFET transistors. MOSFETs themselves are static sensitive, so you want to make sure that you're not uh, charged up with static electricity when you're doing this particular portion of the job. And they are silk screened the direction that they go in. They only go in one way. So be sure you get the polarity correct following the silk screen.
So now it's time to test for power before we plug any chips in. Put power to the unit and I'll have uh, voltages between ground and 5 volts and 9 volts. So there'll be two supplies on here. 9 volt supply and then the rest of them will be 5 volt supply. So let's check the voltages. I'm just looking at the pins here and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll verify it from there. Pin uh, number, this one here, it's ground and the 5 volts should be over here, which we have 5 volts there. Next chip over, which have ground here and 5 volts there, which we do. volts yep and the last I see down here there are five volts across here I think that's the one oh this wrong side here we go five volts should be here which it is so my voltages are all correct not that there's any question that they would be they wouldn't be correct and um, we know that that's all working. So now I can solder in the matrix LEDs. There, there's a symbol on here, the little cat symbol as they say. Uh, the lettering on the side here will point to the cat symbol. Okay, next we'll install the integrated circuits. So we've got all the ICs here. They're all going to plug into the different sockets on here. We'll start out with the small 8-pin dip. You have to pay attention to the mark on the chip itself to line up with pin number 1. So there's a notch on the board and I installed all the sockets accordingly so that there's a notch on the socket as well. Pin 1 has a little notch on the corner of it, so there's pin number 1, we line that up, pop that down, and move over to the two other driver chips next. Ah, hate it when that happens. Hate it when that happens. Well, I don't like IC like sockets so much. Because you can pop them in and bend a pin. Which is exactly what I just did. You gotta pop the chip out carefully and straighten the pin. You get about one chance to straighten it before it's gonna break.
look good. Next one. And finally, yeah, no. Okay, next it's time to mount the RGB LEDs. The third, the longest one, is the one that I've marked in blue here. Um, it's easy to tell because the, the cathode has got a flat side, although these ones have got multiple anodes, but the, the flat side here is marked, and you can see the flat side on the, the side of the LED here. It's the next one over from the longest lead, and they just go down into the board. Like that. So we're going to put all the colored LEDs in and then solder them down and then this project will be ready to test or getting there. Now that I've got all the LEDs mounted, I'm just going to solder them down and then this unit will be ready to test for the first time. Because that, well, there's I've still got the, the real-time clock uh, module to go on here too, so we'll hook that up. But we're, we're getting close to being done on this unit. Time to assemble the uh, real-time clock. Again, it has a crystal on it. This is pretty simple. And it has an IC. And there's no socket for this one, so we'll just pop this IC into the board, maintaining the correct orientation, of course. That bird is still making lots of noise, as you can hear it. I'm doing this, they say, all day. This goes on all day long, every day. It's Great, it's on my nerves from time to time because I don't know how well it's coming over on camera, but it's actually quite loud. It's every bit as annoying as a dog that's barking all day when you're trying to concentrate on something and you got this bloody bird screeching all day long.
we're going to start assembling the cabinet to this unit. And I'm just going to put the bolts through here. And there's some sleeves that go through on the back side. I think it goes there. I didn't see it in the instructions though. So it looks like that's where it, it uh, fits. Yeah, there's a couple pins that, that hold it in place. So there'll be a, a header that goes through here. pins that support it I go through here as well Should line up here like this. Right here. It's held in place by the two pins as well as the other connections on the other side. It does go on the back side as I suspected. So we'll just tack these pins in here. I probably should have soldered the header to the other board first and then onto this, but that's okay. It's no big deal. It's easy enough to do. And then there's just the four connections through here. Okay, real time clock module is now installed and put the battery in this unit. We put the four spacers on. Once the back's been fitted on it, spin the nuts on. Make sure all the LEDs are lined up. Finally, just put the, the feet on it so that it'll stand up. And there the unit is complete. Let's uh, plug it in and see if it works. Verify. Looks like it's working. Got a time display on there. And I 
first plug it in, you'll see what it does here. And I just have to set it. It's got to figure out how to set this thing. Alarm, time, date, screen, ring, looks like it says, brightness. I'll just adjust the brightness of the different LEDs, right? Nine. RGB. That's the display brightness here. So nine. Alarm time. Okay, press the button here. Oh, this is be my hours, I would think. So 1700 hours and minutes will be 14 and seconds. And now the looks like it's running. Alarm two, alarm one, two, and three. Alarm, it's like there's multiple alarms, I believe, on this thing. I gotta read the manual to see how it works, but it's uh, it's working. Let's let's get this thing set. It going through the different menus, I got one called screen, which will let you select 12 or 24 hour time. Seconds off or on. And now it's displaying the time 5, 15 and 40 seconds. That actually looks pretty good. I'm liking it already. So there it is, it's built. I'm not going to go through all the menus on here now. If you go to his website, um, it, he's got a demo video on how to set it on his website. I just wanted to show the construction of this unit here. And as I say, it took me a couple of hours. Pretty straightforward. Great kit for a beginner or even someone who just enjoys building kits. There are a few, as you saw at the beginning, some surface mounted um, resistors that have to be mounted. My camera is sliding down on me here. There are some surface mounted resistors that you have to mount on the PC board, but those are easy. No big deal. Everything else is through hole. Pretty straightforward. It comes with a case. Actually doesn't look too bad. And what a nice little conversation piece. Have that sitting on your desk. I doubt that I'm going to use it as an alarm clock. I just like to build digital clocks of different types and this one is certainly unique again link to the tendy site is in the description if you want to build one of these it's not cheap this was i say one of the more expensive kits that i built but i'm going to get years of enjoyment out of this and it's it's cool just because you know you build it yourself you can see all the parts in it it's neat thanks for watching we'll catch you again real soon bye for now